welcome and good morning. It's very good to see all of you. I'm going to need to get bifocals so that I can both read and see everyone out there. But hey, who's counting the? We are Cleveland Congregational United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation, and everyone, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, is welcome. For today, as you can see, and we will be for the foreseeable future, with people both in the sanctuary and on Zoom, and it is wonderful to see each one of you. One note, typically be having live music for our worship services, um, hybrid services. This morning, because Latia is away, all of our music is going to be recorded, um, but we still encourage both those of you at home and in the sanctuary to sing along for the hymns. As always, your devices are muted, and if you don't have your video turned on or you can't see everyone, or we can't see everyone in the household, please use the chat room to tell us how many people, adults and children, are viewing the service. You are that our Wi-Fi is turned off for most users between 10 a.m. and noon so that we have enough bandwidth to stream our service during that time. Bruce will now share the announcements. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, those of you who braved the cold to be with us this morning in the sanctuary and everyone who's snug and warm at home. Um, a couple of announcements. Uh, readers and greeters, if you would like to participate in worship service by reading scripture, bringing flowers, or greeting people, please sign up in the Sign Up Genius or email Meg at the church email address. Uh, in the moderator's memo this week, uh, I provided a direct link to the Sign Up Genius, so it's very easy to do, and uh, there are details in there, so check the mod memo this week. Um, the Faith Life Group will meet today at 5.30 to talk about the social gospel with a special guest speaker. And if you want to know more about that, please contact Dan Sack. Uh, on next Saturday, there will be a Lenten retreat, and you can join Pastor Ellen from 1 to 5 via Zoom for an afternoon of <clears throat> personal and communal reflection and restoration as we begin the Lenten season and look toward the coming of spring. If you're interested, contact Pastor Ellen on that. <clears throat> the Arts and Culture Group, uh, just in time for the upcoming Academy Awards, will meet at 7.30 to discuss what an original film score is and why we should celebrate these scores and the people who create them. Lisa Jenkins will lead this discussion, and so you can contact Trish McKenzie uh, for information on that event. There'll be a movie night on 325. Where do your passions come from? And where do you go without them? In Soul, jazz pianist Joe Gardner, played by Jamie Foxx, is on the verge of getting everything he ever wanted until he finds himself in the great before with a soul who doesn't want anything. We'll watch the film together, Mask Please, at 7 p.m. and talk about passion, vocation, creativity, mentoring, and cats. So contact Dan Sack if you uh, want to attend the movie night. Uh, there are a few more announcements in your bulletin, and I'll turn it back over to Pastor Allen. Thank you, Bruce. Um, and just please note that um, Dan does need to hear from you by the Wednesday before the movie, so Wednesday. March 23rd, please let him know by then if you plan to participate. I'm very much hoping to be there. Um, I'm, I don't want the microphone like right in front of my mouth, but somebody said that I was going in and out. So just give me feedback. And if it's um, you know not clear, I will adjust things. Uh, one final announcement, same as last week. And that is that um, I think many of you have heard by now that Celestin is delighted to have received a donated car and is now planning a shipment of goods to Nigeria. The need is great and he's seeking. 
this is in the chat room, electric generators, any type of clothing, shoes, or backpacks for kids and adults, kitchen items, pots, pans, plates, cutlery, etc., books, toys, and games, again, for children and adults, and any kind of laptop, cell phone, tablet, iPad, and or other educational device. As I said, the list is in the chat room and you're invited to bring any donations to the church next Sunday or to email me and arrange a drop off. We begin this second Sunday of Lent by lighting our candles of hope and healing for the world. Our Lenten theme is trust, and this morning's service will focus on our relationship with fear. I'll start with a prayer from the Church of England for Ukraine and all places suffering under violence and oppression. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort will draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk, and in fear that you will hold and protect them. Amen. Please join me for our call to worship. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. She restores and brings us strength and peace. Let us join together in the opening prayer. Source of life and love, we live in a world with so many dangers, toils, and snares. Some days we're anxious, others we're truly afraid. How do we find the courage to stand up, speak out, love boldly, and care deeply? Help us to trust we have the heart to do these things. Help us to believe we are strong, you are present, and our church is ready to live out its mission. Help us to follow Jesus and his I now invite you to join in our opening hymn. As I said already, all of the music is recorded this morning with Latia away with live music returning next Sunday. This particular hymn, for those of you who remember Jean Olson, was her favorite.
you to join in a time of silent reflection. When we gather for work, we heed God's call and honor. As we begin this short life-giving breath. What are the joys we have celebrated? And what concerns have we endured? Done that we ought not to have done.
And are there things we have left undone? ahead. What help will we need from God or neighbor? And what can we do to nurture love of God and love of neighbor in the world. source of life. For the joys we have celebrated, we give you thanks. God of compassion, for the concerns we have endured, please tend our hearts. Spirit of justice, for those things we have misdone, transform us with your love. Companion God, as we look forward to the week ahead, be ever present with us. And great lover of all, as we seek to nurture love of God and neighbor in the world, guide our actions and our prayers. Amen. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, no matter what those burdens are. Come to me, set them down, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest from whatever it is you have been carrying on your shoulders, in your heart, in your mind, on your soul. I will give you rest and forgiveness. You can let it go. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. So rest and be assured that through the grace and love of God, you are, I am, each one of us is indeed forgiven by the awesome and redemptive power of God's great mercy and love. We are loved by a God whose name above all else is love. Now held in the arms of this God who is father and mother. Who are Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day, our daily bread. And forgive us our give our debtors. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
that will solve the problem. Just switched out my battery pack. Is that a little better? Can you hear me? Is it any better? Okay. All right. Well, let me know in the chat if it um, gets wonky again. And now I invite you all, whether at home or in the sanctuary, to unmute and stand up and share the peace and love of God with one another. Peace be with you all. Peace, peace uh, with you. Peace. Everyone, good morning. Peace. We are in Michigan. We'll be back next Sunday. Hope you uh, enjoying your peace vacation in the meantime, then. <laughs> in DC next Sunday. Yeah. Good to see everyone. Good to see you too. Thank you. Hey there, Dawn. Hi. Mr. Kelly, Jim Spanifer, Lorna, Gary, Mark Turner, Wesley. No. They're 28th on the. I'm going to. One. So I have just been told that it's it's up to y'all to switch to gallery view. So during the passing of the piece, um, for those of you at home, I encourage you to switch to gallery view so you can see everyone. Um, and then during the rest of the time, should you wish, um, you can switch to speaker view. It is up to you. It is in your control. And so now, um, Callie, I'm just going to ask you, since you've given such wonderful feedback, is this loud enough at this point? It's not cutting in, but it's not quite loud enough. Or I should say it's not cutting in and out, but it's not quite loud enough. I can hear you just fine. Yeah, but last Sunday, I didn't have to have it closer to my mouth. All right, you know, we had such a great, we had a glitch-free time last Sunday, and I know we'll do glitch-free again. Um, everyone's saying it's too low. But Ellen, going, going closer didn't actually make a difference, so if it's more comfortable apart. Yeah, okay. All right, they're working on it, and as they are, let us share our prayer of peace. I invite you to put your hands over your heart. And repeat after me. May peace and health be with me. May peace and health be with this congregation. May peace and health be with our city and our country. May peace and health be with this entire world. Amen. So I'm going to look and see who we have on Line for children this morning. I see Joseph and I see, let's see, who else might we have? Oh, I see Zachary and Nicholas might want to join us. Okay, so I see Joseph and Zachary and Nicholas and of course I see myself. <laughs> All right, so can you each hear me? 
All right. I hear you. I should be excellent. And I'll be able to hear you right through the big screen TV in our sanctuary, okay? So I'm just curious if any of you ever get afraid. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. When it comes to okay. heights. <laughs> when it comes to heights. <laughs> okay. Unless you're skiing, right? And then it's not scary. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, pretty much. Uh, I think that's the only thing. I mean, I'm just trying to overcome my feel. That's all. Okay. All right. And how about you, Zachary? And by the way, nice haircut. Uh, me, Zachary, I have. Wait, wait, Zachary's gonna share Nick, and then if you have another idea, you're welcome to share it, okay? Okay, we did just cut his hair 10 minutes ago, so oh, 10 minutes ago, oh my gosh, but we were not afraid of that, okay. We're not afraid of that. Is there anything that Zachary, the brave, is afraid of? Yes. Heights? What else did you heights, say? okay. We got another one for heights. Anything else? All right, heights, heights is a big one. All right, how about you, Nick? You had something else maybe? Um, well, I mean, Boy, I'm actually I'm not really sure if I have um, anything else to uh, share. Share. Okay. Oh, oh, oh! Here's something. Oh, by the way, I, I just got my hair uh, dyed the other day. You got your hair dyed? Yeah. What color is it? Blonde. It's blonde. Well, it's not really? like the, not the whole thing. It's just uh, uh, like I was hoping to. It's like just the tip top. Wow, Nick, who dyed your hair? <laughs> Kelly and Sam. Wow, all right. I can't wait to take a peek at that. All right, so we have an agreement that if nothing else, heights can be really scary. Yeah, all right. And, and I'm right. guessing like a lot of us in the sanctuary, at home, all ages, I'm guessing we have some other fears, okay? so. Interestingly, at least to me, do you know what phrase is repeated most often in the Bible? Be not afraid. Joseph, what do you think? You have any ideas? I think Zach was going to. Oh, Zachary help. does. I think Joseph. I think Zachary is going to share an idea. Not afraid. Yes, be not afraid or fear not. Do you know how many times it's in the Bible? A how thousand many days times. Are there, a how thousand? many days are there in, not quite, but it's, it's up there. How many days are there in a year? Oh, good point. Uh, 360. Five? Yep, 365. You got it, Zachary and Dick. So guess how many times fear not or be not afraid is in the Bible. But if you include the leap yields, that is 366. Well, yes, that, that is true. But typically, I'm just going to go with like the typical year, okay? Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So there, fear not or be not afraid, okay, in the original language, which was not English, appears 365 times in the Bible. So there's one for every day of the year, like a message to fear not or be not afraid. But sometimes it's really hard not to be afraid because, you know, things in life like heights can be scary. So I'm going to share with you something you can do. And Zachary, this is scientifically proven, research-based, actually evidence-based, yes, peer-reviewed. All right. This is a breathing technique that lowers your body's fear response. Because when we breathe in, 
that actually kind of energizes and activates our body. But it turns out when we breathe out, that actually induces a relaxation response. And so if we focus on breathing in to the count of four, and then just resting with our breath to the count of seven, and then breathing out to the count of eight, that cues our body to relax. Biochemically, neurochemically, all of that good stuff. So shall we try it, everyone? It's just four, seven, eight. It's really easy to remember. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, then just rest with it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I promise you, all right, so do the scientists, that if you do that four times, four, seven, eight, if you do the breathing in four seconds, resting seven seconds, breathing out eight seconds, if you repeat that pattern four times, your body will feel more relaxed. It's just a natural physical response to the breath. And I think that's really cool because we carry our breath with us. It's always with us. The breath of life, we wake up with it, we go all day with it, we go to sleep with it, and then miracle, we wake up again with it. So every day, every 365 days of the year, if you feel a little fear, remember, fear not, and breathe in such a way that that breath of life allows your body to relax. Okay, all right, awesome. Very good to see you. Yes, Joseph, let's clap for you. All right, good to see you all. I would now like to invite Dan forward to read Psalm 27 and a passage from the Gospel of Luke. The psalm comes from Nan Merrill's book, Psalms for Praying, and the gospel reading is from the Message Translation of the Bible. I'll start again. The first reading is from Psalm 27. Love is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Love is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When fears assail me, rising up to accuse me, each one in turn shall be seen in love's light. Through a, multitude of, through a multitude of demons rise up within me, my heart shall not fear. Though doubts and guilt do battle, yet shall I remain confident. Do not turn from me, you who have been my refuge. Enfold me in your strong arms, O blessed one. Though my mother and father may not understand me, you, my beloved, know me and love me. Teach me to be love as you are love. Lead me through each fear. Hold my hand as I walk through the valley of illusions each day that I may know your peace. The second reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Just then, some Pharisees came up and said, 
run for your life. Harold's, Herod, excuse me, Freudian slip. Herod's got your number. He's out to kill you. Jesus said, tell that fox that I've got no time for him right now. Today and tomorrow, I'm busy clearing out the demons and healing the sick. The third day, I'm wrapping things up. Besides, it's not prof proper for a prophet to come to a bad end outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killer of prophets, abuser of the messengers of God. How often I've longed to gather your children, gather your children like a hen, her brood safe under her wings. But you refused and turned away. And now it's too late. You won't see me again until the day you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Thank you, Dan. What are you afraid of? What causes your pulse to race, palms to sweat, stomach to clench? There are plenty of options. If I'd asked this question two years ago today, whatever had most recently been on your mind, climate change, US politics, race-based violence, your own personal crisis, had likely been supplanted by another sudden threat. Because on March 12, 2020, the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic of novel coronavirus. Remember? scurrying to get supplies, holing up in our homes, trying to figure out Zoom, fearing this new invisible danger. Or perhaps your biggest fear is insects, like last year's cicadas. I mean, I personally enjoy them, but there are a lot. And this year, we're being told about a new breed of invasive spiders, big, of course, which is causing panic among arachnophobes. Though in case you find this helpful, I've read they actually aren't harmful to humans and pets. Of course, if you're someone who identifies as a woman and or person of color and or LGBTQ+, you likely know fear up close and personal quite often. And now Ukraine. And the prospect of a very big war with a leader who has no scruples and doesn't hesitate to mow down anyone, no matter their age or civilian status, who gets in his way. Pandemic, insects, human evil, another war. We're counting down the seven plagues in Exodus and closing in on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But friends, let's take that four, seven, eight breath. Because it was ever so. There's always been plenty to frighten us legitimately. What matters is what we're afraid of. So what is it for you? There's no right or wrong answer. As Jennifer Molin Kovash writes, truly, we're all afraid of many things, whether we admit it publicly or not. We're afraid of not having enough fill in the blank, money, time, antibodies of losing someone or something, of dying, of failing, and yes, sometimes of insects or storms. 
Fear is one of those universals, even if the details differ between us. Of course, our individual human fear has more to do with internal perception than actual risk. For example, our limbic system can't tell the difference between a real war and the threat of war, which is why watching images from Ukraine can be so traumatizing. Or to use another example, our brain reacts in pretty much the same manner to being chased by a bear as it does to the fear of having a difficult personal conversation. Both send signals for our heart to race, palms to sweat, stomach to clench, and we're soon ready to fight or flee. The problem is, unless running or fighting is actually going to save our life, getting activated in this manner doesn't help. And we're usually not being chased by a bear. So our body's stress response causes a lot of harm. High blood pressure, substance abuse, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, depression, and anxiety are all increased by the stress of bodies operating on high alert. When we're too often hijacked by fear, we become prisoners of our own adrenaline response and the bodily ills that result. Yet fear is a wily fox. Which is why the Bible mentions it so often, as I told the children, 365 times to be exact, one for each day of the year. Fear not or be not afraid are the most common biblical expressions because we're human and we fear. But how can I trust these sayings? If I say, fear not, what's your response? What about be not afraid? How does that make you feel? Suddenly calm and courageous, or do you react with a, why shouldn't I be afraid? Look around, hello. If you're in the latter category, I get it. There are ample reasons to be frightened. We all read the papers, scroll through our news feeds, watch CNN, or listen to NPR. We're informed overly. But as I told you earlier, amorphous fear isn't our friend. Unless there is a bear actually chasing us, our body's response to fear won't help solve any of the problems making us anxious or afraid. It will simply wear us out. And perhaps scientific research aside, this is what the psalmist was getting at. Maybe it's even what kept Jesus going. Think about this morning's reading from Luke. The Pharisees tempt, they actually tempt Jesus to be afraid, just as we're constantly tempted by our news feeds. The Pharisees tempt Jesus to be afraid by saying, run for your life, Herod's got your number, he's out to kill you. But Jesus responds, tell that fox, aka wildly threat to my life, I've got no time for him right now. In other words, I have other more important things to do than listen to fear. I have other more life-affirming things to accomplish than listen to plots of my death. Now, to be clear, Jesus had reason to be afraid. Really good reason. Arguably, the most powerful empire the world has ever known wanted him dead by any means necessary. So why wasn't he afraid, that is? Well, I'm guessing he was. He was human, so he experienced fear. But Jesus also knew something many others in the face of danger, even extreme danger, have discovered. If you're living a life 
worth living, doing something life-affirming, and helping others live lives worth living, you're likely too focused on life to fear death. Jesus said, tell that fox, Herod, I have no time for him right now. I'm too busy clearing out demons and healing the sick. Meaning take your fear mongering and shove it. I have lives to save, people to heal. which is how I imagine it feels to be a humanitarian aid worker in Ukraine right now, or Ethiopia, or how it felt in Kabul or Tripoli, Tripoli or Aleppo. How it feels for life to be so much of a focus, so much of a priority, death is but a side note. Something that will come as it must, because we're human, but not something to fear. Because life in the present moment is so intense, so meaningful, so real. Be not afraid. Fear not. When you think about it, Jesus could have been racked by fear his entire three-year ministry as could MLK Jr. or any other martyr for love and justice over the long history of humankind. Again, I'm not saying they were never afraid. If we're human, we experience fear. I'm simply suggesting fear wasn't in charge. Their limbic systems weren't constantly fleeing a bear. There was something more powerful that somehow short-circuited their reptilian brains and made them able to keep the focus on human life and love. As Nan Merrill translates the psalmist, love is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And as Jesus said, quoting Isaiah, like a mother hen who gathers her brood safe beneath her wings, so can our focus on life, love, and justice shelter us from the wily fox of fear. So I ask you once more, what are you afraid of? Whatever you say, I affirm. We're human, we fear. But now I add what matters to you. What and whom do you hold most dear? And I suggest, whatever this is, it's what you defend from a bear or fox, though I really do dislike these animal metaphors. In any case, it's the life in life affirming you'd protect. It's what you care about. It's what you hold close to your heart. And heart or core is, after all, what courage is all about. I don't know if now is rationally and realistically a time to be more afraid than ever before, and I'm not sure it matters. Whatever we're afraid of, our fear is legitimate. There are plenty of boogeyman out there. What matters is how we respond. What matters is what we care about. Because from where I stand, caring gives rise to courage. And courage is what overshadows fear. Meaning Psalm 27 is spot on.
Teach me to be love as you are love. Lead me through each fear. Hold my hand as I walk through valleys of illusion each day that I may know your peace. Amen. Now I invite you to listen to an old um, post-Vatican II Catholic favorite by John Michael Talbot, Be Not Afraid.
it is now the time in our service when we share our deep joys and concerns silently or out loud with God and with one another. I'll share those we've already received plus any posted in the chat room and then Bruce will carry the microphone around for anyone in the sanctuary who would like to share. God, hear our healing prayers for Kristen. Sandy, as he continues his cancer treatment, Jane's friend who is chronically obese and cannot afford medical treatment and all who suffer from this misunderstood medical condition. John B's friend Carolyn, friends Carolyn and Bill, that her chemo for endometrial cancer will be successful and likewise his treatment for prostate cancer will succeed. Carol P's childhood friend of 63 years who is being treated for colon cancer. God, hear our prayers for a safe delivery for Christina and Rhea as they wait their new baby boy. Emily Solomon, whose mom is now dying in hospice. The family and friends of Magda's friend and next door neighbor Knox. In particular, his parents, Jessica and Will, and his sister, Aurora. Holly's friend, Freeman, as he continues to recover from stomach surgery. The people of Ukraine and all places dealing with human-made or natural disasters. All those affected by the Texas anti-trans policies and all people everywhere who are impacted by anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric and action. Anyone, anywhere, who is sick or grieving or in need. God, we also have joys in our lives. And we give thanks for the many people who contributed their books to the Friends of the Library sale. For Sarah Pease, former immigration client, receiving her green card after many years. Celestin, receiving another vehicle to ship goods to communities in need. All the flowers, bushes, and trees that are blooming and on the verge of blooming. And people enjoying the outdoors without masks. Sharing from the chat room, Maggie says she wants prayers for her fourth grade class and all students at DC public schools that they will treat each other with kindness and respect, especially this Wednesday when masks become optional. And Callie shares the joy that tomorrow is Pi Day and she has a friend in, my apart in her apartment building happy to share Pi, P-I-E, with her. Let's take a moment of silence to hold these joys and concerns in our hearts. Again, those of you at home are invited to place any in the chat room. And in a moment, Bruce will bring the microphone around for those in the sanctuary. A um, prayer of thanksgiving um, and an update on my friends, uh, Carolyn and Bill, uh, who are uh, both judges in LA Superior Court. But I had a um, call from Bill yesterday from the ski slope. Uh, so he is responding well to his treatment. And more importantly, he reports that Carolyn, who happens to be his boss, not only in the house, but in the LA Superior Court, is uh, responding well to her chemo. She's been approved for an immunization, immunity therapy. The numbers are all back where they need to be. So at the moment, looking positive. 
So thanks for that. Wonderful news. Uh, joy that we are bringing home a new puppy on Thursday, which we're very excited about, uh, and also prayers for patience and some good night's sleep. And so, oh, patience, yes. <laughs> Um, it's been two years since the death of my nephew, and so just remembering my brother and all those who loved Axel. I'll add one for um, sort of a, a joy and a concern for uh, a friend of mine. She um, had uh, just birthed a child, um, was I think six weeks early, maybe three pounds, four ounces and healthy, but will be in the hospital for, uh, for weeks to come. Um, so prayers that, um, that all that goes well. Anyone else? It looks like there's one more joy in the chat room from Callie. Thank you, tech team, for your awesome video work during Joys and Concerns. Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the prayers of your people. Comfort and nourish us in both our joys and our concerns, spoken or unspoken and hold us tenderly as we face the many different experiences that life and being human can bring. Holy and gracious Spirit, we are grateful for your presence as we move into this new week, a time that will bring forth its own sorrows and joys. Remind us to hold one another in love and prayer, reaching out as we are able to lend a hand offer support, or share in celebration. We give thanks for the blessing of this congregation in our lives and pray that we might be a blessing to others in return. In your compassionate name, amen. I now invite you to hold all these joys and concerns in your heart as we listen to Callie's debut she is going to share with us her recording of Bring Your Peace. When, 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 when will our hearts find peace? Bring, 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 bring your peace to our hearts. When, 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 when will our hearts find peace? Bring, 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 bring your peace to our hearts. Cry with those who weep, hold all those who Justice solves the meek, splendor of the poor. Then, when, when, when will our hearts find peace? Bring, 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 bring your peace to our hearts. kingdom come, may your will be done on this dark and earth as under heaven's sun. When, 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 when will our hearts find peace? Bring, 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 bring your peace to our hearts. Cry with those who weep, hold all those who mourn. Just 
justice of the meek, splendor of the poor. When, 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 when will our hearts find peace? Bring, 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 bring your peace to our hearts. May your kingdom come, may your will be done, on this darkened earth, as under heaven's sun. When, 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 when will our hearts find peace? Bring, 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 bring your peace to our hearts. Well, that was truly gorgeous. Thank you so much, Callie. And I hope that that um, also encourages any of you who has a musical offering you would like to share, we would love to receive your gift. So if any of you has a musical instrument or your own vocal instrument um, and you'd like to offer something during a service, um, please contact me or Sarah Spey, who's our music committee chair, um, and just let us know. That was wonderful, Callie. Thank you. It is now the time in our service when we receive the offering in grateful appreciation for the life and work of this beloved community. To support the ongoing work of our church, I ask that you please give in person via mail or on our website as you are able. If you're here in the sanctuary, you're welcome to place a donation in the offering box at the rear of the church. We're still not passing the plate. And the donate link is in the chat room if you'd like to give online now. If you have any difficulty, please email John Tishy, our assistant treasurer. He's happy to help and his email address will be in the chat room as well. I now invite you to take a moment of silence in appreciation for the gift of this church and its many blessings in our lives. Please join in singing the doxology. When we held our first online service two years ago, I can't believe it's been two years, our closing hymn was Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And so in honor of that anniversary, wherever you are in your journey with all that has happened in the meanwhile, I invite you to stand and sing it this morning. Fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on 
and the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. So as we go forth this morning, knowing that there is much to fear, both within and without, but knowing also that we have the heart, the core, the courage to face that fear with one another and with God, I encourage you to lean. Don't try to stand on your own. Don't try to do it all yourself. Lean in whatever way you need to lean on your God, on your neighbor, on your family, on your friends, knowing, knowing that the arms are there for us, not the arms of war, but the arms of love and of peace. Please join in our sung benediction. Before we hear the prelude, I invite um, any of you who would like to stay on for just a few minutes afterwards um, for coffee hour, for a little coffee hour chat, please do. Um, we're not going to take long because the council is meeting this afternoon on this Zoom link and they have a rather long agenda today with um, lay leadership orientation. So we'll just say hi for a few moments and then council members will gather right after that on this same Zoom link. Um, for those of you who have really missed in-person coffee hour, I will tell you that that is one of the items on our council agenda this afternoon, and hopefully in the not too distant future, we will be able to gather together in the parlor after worship. There's some clapping for that. <laughs> 